Hi guys, welcome to Construction Cronies. My name is Chris Conkle and today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a wall just like this. First thing you need to do is lay it out, obviously. So if you uh, have a blueprint or don't, either way, you're going to need to make sure that it all lines up to the structure. Uh, in this situation here, we don't have a blueprint, but we we want one side to run straight up with the drywall finish, okay? And on this side, there'll be another bulkhead like that over there, right? Um, so we got to make sure you got to check both sides. You want to check from your pile cap, which is right here. This is your pile cap, right? This is your grade beam pile cap. Uh, so you want to basically check from that to your iron, okay? Make a mark, you know, set it up, and then do the same on the other side. All right, and if you're lucky, it'll look good. You'll you'll be um, you'll be uh, all set to go, okay? When you check it with the laser. But in this case, it wasn't. I had to move it in another inch on this side because it was uh, too far out. Too far out on this side. I want it to be tight. So the drywall will just run past. It's still about a half inch out, but I, I can live with that. So anyways, so you move that, I moved to that side in, um, and then I set the laser in the middle, and of course I'm gonna check it all around, and it looks really good, so we're good to go. You wanna make sure that the green, like the laser, is not on the iron in the top, okay? You want it to be past the iron. All right, so on this this column here, you can see it kind of comes in a little bit in the middle. We're gonna cheat that out. That's no big deal. It's it's flush at the top, flush at the bottom. Um, so now when we, I put the steel in, I'll put the steel on the edge, of course. And I'll shoot it up that column. Um, and then I'm gonna come up and I'll clamp up the track. I'll show you how that all goes after. But it's important, the layout is your first step. And once you get that solid, the rest is really easy. If you have any questions about layout, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll gladly answer your, your questions, guys. So then, once you got your once you got your laser lined up where you want it, go make some marks, chalk a line. Do not put down the bottom track first, okay? Always do the top track first. All right, because you're going to be, it's your bottom track will be in the way. All right, you want to get the top on before you uh, you do the bottom. Okay, so for a heavy gauge steel stud wall, what you're going to need, if you're doing it on concrete and steel like what we are here, what you're going to need is a chop saw with face shield. You're going to need uh, the shots for the Hilti. So we got concrete and steel. Uh, we got some green and yellow tabs for the 351, the shotgun here. Uh, not necessary, but on, in our case it is because of the extreme heavy gauge is a drill because we have to pre-drill our bottom track before we put our uh, before we hammer drill it. A grinder not necessary again, but very um, very handy to have. Now a must is an impact gun with um, a magnetic shaft and a two number two Phillips bit. Um, you're gonna need a, some, a variety of clamps, small and big, a butterfly clip tape measure, marker, snips are not necessary for heavy gauge, but handy to have. Uh, framing square, I like the combination square. Uh, these are the pin bolts here that we're gonna use for going into the concrete with the hammer and drill and a laser of some sort. Uh, we're using this Dewalt here. And, oh yes, applicator and the uh, caulking. So this is the acoustical sealant to go underneath the bottom track. Um, I use my mask when I'm shooting on old, like steel and stuff where uh, there's a bunch of dust up there. So I'll use my mask. Material, you're in the your deep track, your slotted deep track. Channel, wall channel right here. A shallow track for the bottom, which is this stuff right here. These all come in 10 foot lengths, okay, the track. So we have 50 feet, we got five pieces of each. 
So yeah, bottom track is the shallow and top track is the slip track. Uh, and of course, stud, which is over here. This is not all of our stud, it's outside, but those are our long ones. And that's for the framing. You'll need your pouch, of course. That goes without saying. And a hammer. <laughs> Sorry, the last thing you're gonna need is screws, right? You're framing screws. I'm sure these little Kelly screws or wafers, whatever you wanna call them, they're uh, self-drilling framing screws. All right, it's cause this is really heavy gauge. Uh, using, I'm pre-drilling the holes for the hammer uh, for the pin bolts. So for the hammer drill bit, it won't go through this steel. So I recommend using a step bit. They just last longer. You like to get these five tracks, you'll go through like three or four uh, normal steel bits. So go with the step bit, um, two on each end. Okay, and remember, don't go too close to the edges because you need to get your hammer in there to hammer down the pins, right? And then every two feet, stagger to each side. You see what I mean? Boom, boom, and two on the ends. Okay, two on the ends and stagger every two feet. Then you can use uh, Hilti pins in between to, to tack it in if you need to. Okay, I got all the studs set out that we're gonna need. It's important to know that studs, there's, there's up and a down, okay? It's two feet to the first cutout always. And it's important to line up all your cutouts for things like channel and stuff like that, right? For, to hold up your insulation and whatnot. They kind of look like an arrow, okay? So they're pointing up. So you can see all, the studs are pointing up and you always draw your tape from the bottom okay to make your cuts you take it from the bottom and cut the tops off it's important to know that You get to shoot your track in, right? You gotta clamp it on. You know, easier when you work with a partner, of course. But clamp it on, uh, shave the beam, like we say. Uh, you know, get it on your mark. Two pins on the end, right? I go like every foot on the on this track, but uh, with the pins in the middle. Uh, but two on the end. A lot of guys stagger them, but I go a little, just a little closer than two feet. Instead, I go like a foot. I go in the middles, but two on the ends. Whew. Don't draw out your top centers yet because it's, it's an angled wall. You're gonna have to do your light on the bottom and laser them. Okay, so yeah, when you're putting your track down onto the concrete, uh, you definitely wanna use uh, acoustical sealant. One line down the middle, squiggly line quarter inch bead is the rule of thumb if you go bigger it's no big deal or nothing like that so uh, when you're doing it this way a tube will uh, go a long way you'll probably get 150 to 100 feet out of one tube all right well then we're gonna flip it over set it on the chalk line and hammer drill it with the pin bolts Now, when you got a bunch of pins to put in, you grab a piece of conduit. Not so big. 
just bend the end and you stick the thing in and there you go hammer the top right get the get the pin bolt in This is a two foot center wall, so either way you're doing two foot or 16 uh, inch, just do your layout on the bottom. And then we're gonna end up lasering up for, uh, to the top because of the angle. You won't be able to draw your tape across. It'll be wrong, right? So we'll laser them up. Uh, use the laser distance finder to take our measurements. So all our measurements are, are uh, written on the track already. So now I'll just make a list of things to cut. That's that. So we have all our stud measurements. Oh, tracks in, layout's done. Studs are laid out over there, ready to go. That's that. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's get, let's recap. So we did our layout. We figured out where we wanted to put the wall. Uh, if you have drawings, then you put them to where the drawings are. But even if you have drawings, you always have to check where it lines up to the structural, okay? So on this, in this case, we want it to drywall to run past on this side and build a bulkhead on this side to cover the beam. Um, so we adjusted the layout a little bit, okay? Uh, which is totally fine. We're totally allowed to do that. If you need to get permission from the general, get it in writing, whatever you gotta do, just do it. Anyway, so layout. Uh, then we uh, did our top track first, okay? We shot our laser. We went up and shot our top track. So that is all on. Then we come down and did our bottom track. To do our bottom track, we drilled, we pre-drilled the holes for the pin bolts, right? Um, because of the 16 gauge steel. Um, it, it, the hammer drill bit will not go through it. And if you use drill bits, you'll be using a lot of them. So we use the step bit because it will last forever. Um, it's only a quarter inch pin bolt. So when we had the holes pre-drilled, we snapped a chalk line for, uh, for our layout. Uh, we caulked it on the bottom with the black acoustical sealant and then we hammer drilled it in pinning it on, pinning it in one on each side just to hold the track in place to get all the tracks in and get the final cut in and then we come back and drill all the holes and put all the pins in and uh, then we do our bottom layout so for our wall here is two foot centers um, if yours is 16 inch centers, that's fine. Just find out what centers you are. Either go 16 or two foot or one foot, whatever your layout is for the wall you're building. Ours here is only is two foot. So make sure you know the layout. Check where the drywall is gonna go, okay? You need to, you need to do a test sort of, okay? You don't want the drywall to finish like one inch before the end of a wall or something, okay? You want it to be at least 16 inches, okay? Uh, if, if possible. Um, it, you can always adjust it so that it's not so messed up like that, okay? Uh, you can put studs where, where it needs to go, but think about where the drywall is gonna go and uh, uh, then, then do your layout. You might have to play with your layout, your centers a little bit to get them lined up to where you, where you need to, where the drywall will work, okay? So think about the next stage, think about the drywall stage, okay? Just don't automatically go six, 16 off of the wall or something like that okay figure out figure it out also you need to um take into consideration um okay oh right so if you're if you're going to be uh if you're framing off a wall that has steel per se this is drywalled already okay but say it's steel that has drywall running through and you're doing 16 inch centers or two foot centers make sure you come out you go 16 half or 16 5 8 to your first center, 
okay? And then go 16s or, or two foots, okay? But come out the width of the drywall if that wall is gonna have drywall, okay? Because when you go to drywall it after again, okay, you'll, you'll be over a half inch, it won't work. So, you know, you'll have to piece it in and then your whole layout's blown. So make sure you have any questions, ask me down in the comments. So we have all the measurements. Uh, we used a laser pointer uh, distance finder for uh, to get the measurements. It's an angled wall. So the, the two foot centers, the studs are gonna come down in two inch in increments, right? So uh, we got all the measurements. Next step is to get all the studs marked up and cut <coughs> and start standing them. We're, gonna, we're going to stand half the studs put the wall channel in and then stud the other half so we could pull the channel through. That's an important step, okay? You don't wanna be putting in a channel at the end. Channel is this stuff, okay, wall channel. That stuff will hold the insulation in, so you want it every four feet. And it's also acts as a, 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 stu a stud stiffener as well. Okay, so to shoot up the shoot up the stud, uh, plumb them up. We're using the line laser, which is perfectly fine. Um, this point will be the same as the top because it's perfectly level, the wall, right? So we'll plumb up the studs with the line laser. Um, the straight straight go, we can, we can pull our tape, draw our tape, but as we get to the angled part, we will need to laser up every stud. <laughs> so you can see it gets kind of crazy. So the best way to do this is to mark a bunch of studs and then cut a bunch, right? But uh, we're gonna do a test and make sure the measurement's good. Um, don't cut the wrong studs, okay? Because we have certain studs that are longer for the end, right? And then they get shorter. Also with the stud, the you have to cut the tops off. Okay, because you want all the knockouts to line up because you got to put the channel through it and also the like electrical and things like that will be going through them. So they need to be at the same level. So draw your tape from the bottom up. You can see they kind of look like an arrow going up, right? Uh, the, the hole in the slot, the hole is always at the bottom. Some studs are different. You'll, they'll just have one like oval or whatnot. If you need to know, it's two foot to, to the bottom here. Okay, to the first one, it's two feet, always to the to the bottom of the first knockout, so you can check, right, to see where that is. So uh, every stud that goes onto the steel, you're gonna shoot it with pins, every two feet, okay? Uh, so we're gonna do that first, and then we'll start studding it out. It's important to know the direction of the stud, right? You have a soft side and a hard side. The studs are always pointing the way you drew your centers towards where the drywall goes, okay? So the drywall starts on this end. All the studs are gonna be pointing this way, okay? The hard side points in the direction of the, of the drywall, where the drywall is supposed to go, all right? So that's how that goes. Uh, because we were having the issue of the, this is more than two feet, uh, we put in a, a header right to where it intersects where the last two foot goes so we can piece in and we won't have that little one inch strip on the ends anymore so it's just a simple header across and a little leg here a cripple type thing which i use for all my tracks i'm gonna put four screws so it's simple like that. So what the slip track is for, you're gonna keep your studs uh, uh, shorter for like two, uh, three quarters of an inch for deflection. Um, this is a really old building. So we are to going down a half inch on it, but normally you go three quarters. Uh, you want the screws to be, this is actually kind of low in my opinion. You want them to be more towards the middle here. Uh, so they have uh, room for deflection up and down, right? Never put them on, on the bottom or at the top. You want them, you know, just below the middle is perfect, actually, is the sweet spot. This is a perfect spot right there. Uh, use, your, use your square to square it across. You know, you don't do your, you don't lay out both sides of the track. Square it, clamp it, screw it off, and that's it, done. All right, on. So that's your framing square. Just square it across. 
clamp it if you have to and screw it off. Right? When you're working with this steel, always wear gloves, okay? It's the most important PPE you could have is gloves. And when you're screwing in overhead, to wear safety glasses. So we got our steel as well. I'm putting it in as we go because it's uh, while we're here. We're going to shoot all the steel that we need as well because we got to cover all this iron, right? So then we'll bulkhead this. We're going to drop a sheet and then return it into the wall. So. But yeah, while we're here, we'll shoot in all the angle. So then that's all done. You got your sh uh, studs all screwed in, squared off. Uh, you got your wall channel in. And good to go. So this one here is a little too bag. So that's why we take the grinder up with us. Just like that sweet so like I was saying uh, end studs here that are on the steel we're shooting them in um, the angle is all shot in so we angled out all our iron uh, we've got our bulkheads uh, pretty much framed out as well all we need to do is drop the drywall and angle into the other stud there if for the return oh uh, the stiffener the channel goes in every four feet. That's to hold in the insulation, okay? It also acts as a stud stiffener, like a, st a wall stiffener, um, but its um, uh, main purpose is to hold the insulation in, all right? So it doesn't all fall down the wall, right? Um, <clears throat> put a nice little head there so I, we don't have a gap, but more than a two foot gap there. Um, and we can land uh, our sheets on this, it'll, you know, and piece it in so we can stagger our drywall joints. It's double air 5 8 This is a 16 gauge, six inch steel stud wall. The, the high studs up there, uh, plus the beam, we were up to, what are we at? I'd say 23 feet high up there is at, the, at the peak. Uh, this wall channel too, I always uh, put a screw in it. I always put a screw in the wall channel so that uh, nobody messes with it and it doesn't slide out or whatever. So every stud is lasered in, lasered, so they're all plumb. Um, the wall is perfectly level here. Uh, we lasered that in, you saw that. Now this, this wall stud here, okay, normally if it was just drywall, you would just put a whole bunch of screws in it. But because there's an iron beam behind it, I need to get uh, some fasteners that I don't have here today, but I'll put in longer self-drilling, um, uh, like, like I'll go like three eighths or five sixteenths self-drilling uh, hex screws. You see one kind of sticking out up there, uh, but it's not it's not the right kind. It's not uh, drilling through the iron column. So, yeah, that's basically it. Everything's lasered. Um, we everything's screwed in and squared across. Right, so it's all screwed in, squared off. And that's how you build a wall. And on an, on an angle too, right? Da, 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 da.